that? Is that... Is that Eurobeat? The car I am driving today is going to be viewed one of two ways by all who see it, either as some weird looking funny old Japanese heap or a living legend. We are talking about a 1983 Toyota Sprinter Trino GT Apex, or is it Truno? I'm never quite sure really. Either way, there are two ways you probably found out about this car. The way that I did, through the magic of Gran Turismo, where you're probably absolutely confused why it is that this car kept winning races and why exactly it was panda-coloured, or through the magic of Initial D, the 1990s Japanese anime series about a young lad who is more or less coerced into becoming a professional drifter by his father. I have waited a very very long time to drive one of these and I am so happy that I did because the one I'm driving now is the only one I'd want to be in. This belongs to Simon, a good friend of my friend Dominic and he's brought it up to me while I'm here in Scotland to enjoy on what is today the Scotch Toge as I'm going to christen it. So if you aren't really familiar with the legend of this car, what actually is it? Well, it was introduced in about 1983 as the fifth generation Sprinter or Corolla. It was quite unusual at the time because most other manufacturers for their hatchbacks were moving to front wheel drive, whereas this stuck with rear wheel drive. The engine is a twin cam 1.6 litre Toyota engine known as the 4AGE. It produces 130 horsepower, which is pretty nippy. That's equivalent to a Peugeot 205 GTI with the 1.9 in it. It's fairly light too, being around about a ton. The GT Apex was I think the luxury trim level and came with things like this electric sunroof that works and power steering, which has been removed from this particular car. It also has the most 80s-tastic dash that's just absolutely wonderful. And um, that's sort of it really. The interior is very much old, cheap feeling Japanese car with lots of questionable plastic and some funny design choices like the fact that most of the warning lights are in English, except the one for the cat, which is not. The graphics on the side, in case you weren't into the whole initial D thing, are the logo of the Fujiwara Tofu Shop. And the little paper cup in here is also a nod to that series. That peppy little twin cam goes all the way to 7,500 RPM, which is a pretty respectable rev ceiling even now. It's mated to a five-speed manual gearbox, which even at modest speeds is actually really quite nice to use. These seats don't really look that fantastic. In fact, they are very, very 1980s old sofa. However, they're pretty good to sit in. They're quite comfortable if, if not the sort of most sturdy feeling things. Visibility out of this is absolutely brilliant because it's all glass. The pillars are paper thin as you tend to find in cars of this age. And generally it does feel and sound a bit like a cheap old Japanese car. But you see, these were never about being the last word in luxury. They were all about being absolutely riotous fun to drive. Simon has been into Initial D for quite some time and he considered buying one of these many years ago, but then saw they were about £7,000 and thought, understandably, ha, sod that, it's quite a bit of money to pay for a car whose reputation is there only because of a cartoon. How silly we all were to ignore those. I tried to get an idea as to what one is worth now, and the only example I could find up for sale was at an auction. It was in red, which is not the most desirable colour, actually the colour this car started out. It had the one lady owner, it was a UK supplied car, 1987, had reasonable miles on it, but was a Cat C, and it's currently up for auction at £33,000. 
I was for a moment thinking this could be a decent entry for my next classic car playlist, but um, honestly, that's just way too much for me. I don't love them that much, or at least I don't think that I do. The way really to find out is to get this on the roads and see if it's as good as a cartoon would have me believe. It is not, but fun, it most definitely is. This engine is an absolute hoot. The car doesn't weigh very much, so the relative lack of power and torque aren't too much of an issue. It is every bit as fearsome and as interactive as you really might have hoped. The steering is delicious. It's actually had quite a bit of work done to it because when it came over from Japan, it wasn't steering right. Luckily, there is a huge scene for these over in Ireland, which is a great source of not just parts, but support as well. <laughs> that was the Japanese speed limit warning, which is the most delightful and charming little bong you'll ever really hear in a car. I do apologize if it appears every now and again, but uh, there's nothing we can do about it at present. It's a tiny little thing, so it feels really at home here on these roads. The suspension is no longer standard because it came over with a, a mixture of stuff. It's now got BC Racing coilovers at the front and AVOs at the rear. Suspension is McPherson strut up front with a four link setup and a panhard bar at the back. I say that like I really know what a panhard bar is. I can sort of picture it in my head, but the key thing here is that if you haven't set the thing up right and you have lowered it, which is what the previous owner had done, it'll produce some very undesirable handling characteristics. When correctly set up though, this thing is absolutely magic. The steering has just got that brilliant texture and feel that you only really ever get with these old fashioned setups. You do have to be a little bit careful because grip ultimately is somewhat limited. The tires are not enormous and uh, it's just an older car. going to have to disappoint some anime fans and tell you that if we were chasing an R34 GTR right about now, I don't think we'd be seeing which way it went. Oh, be quiet you. However, I'm not really that fast because I am having so much fun. Pretty much my only concern about this car before I drove it was it was going to be a little bit obnoxiously loud, and luckily it isn't. It's got a full stainless exhaust on it, a Fujitsubo system, and it's judged really nicely. It makes a good sound, but not too much of it. If anything, I'd say it actually could afford to be just a little bit louder. It flows down this road so well. Just got to be careful though, because its ultimate ability is not that high, so I have found myself coming around a couple of bends a little bit wider than I would like. In a straight line too, you also just don't have the pace. There are a few different cars that are quite similar to this one. There's the Levin, which has non-pop-up headlights, just regular items. Those, of course, aren't anywhere near as desirable, despite having featured in the anime, but actually as the, the cheaper, less desirable car. Because it has quite a short wheelbase, you know, it's really a fairly small thing. It's a little bit bouncy and jittery at low speeds, and that, that you kind of expect. You know, I wasn't thinking it was gonna be all plush and soft riding. Simon's also done some fairly impressive work to add in some extra switches and things for some of the controls. And genuinely, if I didn't know they were not original, I wouldn't be able to tell. Some are from a Corolla, some are from a Forerunner. <laughs> Everyone loves pop-ups. Being an old car, the brakes really are the dynamic weak point. They respond well enough, but they just don't have the bite and they are wobbling quite a bit. So gonna need to get those checked out fairly soon. Chassis is very playful though. If this was 10 grand, I'd have one in a heartbeat just for a laugh. But at 30 odd, you've got to be seriously dedicated. That's, that's just the unfortunate truth of it. You know, I'm very lucky. I get to drive these things for half an hour or so, say they're brilliant, then that's it, you're done with it. But if you've got to live with it and drive it and enjoy it, these apparently are quite easy things to live with and maintain and all that. And there's plenty of parts and everything for them. But 
it's just a huge sum of money to part with for something that isn't ultimately that flash or fancy inside and most of the world just won't get why it is exactly that you spent a huge sum of money on something like this you could get very very similar feel and thrills from a 205 gti and for many people that really is just as good all the controls in this are really light engine revs up so quickly and freely you need just the lightest of touches on the accelerator and you are off the utter wheels of this thing barely be troubling the speed limit have the utter time of your life this may not be the classic for me but this is a perfect demonstration of why it is that I want an older slower car for my next purchase because every now and again this is exactly what I want it's so good I knew everyone raved about it but also cars like this they can become so legendary it'd be impossible for them to ever live up to expectations not the case here not the case at all this is so much more than just a cartoon tofu truck it's a legend in real life as well thank you simon